Many of the times patients usually come to us and they say they have difficulty in swallowing. Patients usually experience this, uh, uh, propose this complaint to us when we give them uh, medication, especially the oral tablets which has to be swallowed. Why is this condition? What is this condition actually called? So this difficulty in swallowing is nothing but dysphagia and today our topic of discussion is dysphagia. Dysphagia as the name itself indicates this is difficulty and phagia is swallowing. So dysphagia is nothing but difficulty in swallowing. Swallowing is usually a complex procedure where it will uh, involve it will involve various organs where which is nothing but your lips, your buccal mucosa, tongue which usually make the bolus of the food with uh, <clears throat> as the teeth as as the teeth uh, crushes the food and tongue lips and buccal mucosa along with the vestibule will make a bolus of the food and this will be swallowed by the esophagus and which palate and pharynx also help uh, in case of the swallowing so swallowing is a complex activity which is characterized by a coordinated activity of lips tongue palate pharynx and larynx Normally, these structures, the, uh, the structures which we just spoke about are innervated by cranial nerves 7, 9, 10, 11 and 12. So, remember this topic because whenever these cranial nerves, any defect in the cranial nerves happen, in these cranial nerves that is 7, 9, 10, 11 and 12, then this will lead to uh, paresthesia of that region. This may also cause dysphagia. Normally, this dysphagia is usually associated with vomitings and heartburn because when they have difficulty in swallowing, they either cannot swallow the whole the food properly or there will be regurgitation of the food because it is not entering into the stomach due to various reasons that we will see in the next slides. Normally it should be differentiated from a lump feeling in the throat or odinophagia. Odinophagia is nothing but odino is pain, phagia is swallowing. So odinophagia is nothing but uh, patients usually feel pain on swallowing. Dysphagia is a condition where patient has difficulty in swallowing and odinophagia is nothing but pain on swallowing. This odinophagia can also lead to dysphagia. Okay. And other condition is feeling of lump in the throat. That is uh, patients when they swallow, they feel like there is something within the throat. There is something struck within the throat or there is a feeling of lump or a swelling within the or a growth within the throat. Now coming to the causes of this dysphagia. Normally, uh, we may have structural causes. These structural causes include problems in the oropharynx and esophagus. So these are the main structures which will help in swallowing. And these structural changes include any strictures. Strictures are nothing but constrictions. These strictures are, can be either benign strictures or malignant strictures. Now, and benign structural changes include fibrous rings. Fibrous rings uh, such as Kazatki rings usually seen in case of use of esophagus. Peptic rings can also be seen. These are nothing but fibrosed rings. Usually see a constrictions there at different levels. And we also have esophenophilic esophagitis. And certain drugs like bisphosphonates can also cause uh, these benign strictures. Now coming to malignancies. CA of esophagus can cause strictures. CA of uh, stomach that is carcinoma of stomach. And any extrinsic compressions that is compression from overlying structures can be a thyroid or any other uh, glands such are present overlying or any lymph node which has grown in size and it is causing obstruction or any CA on the extra uh, external side other pediastinal CA can also lead to extrinsic compression that is compression from the outside then these also can lead to dysphagia coming to esophagitis esophagitis is nothing but inflammation of the esophagus this inflammation of esophagus can be due to various causes such as candidiasis or any peptic uh, causes and also eosinophilic esophagitis. These conditions are usually associated with odinophagia rather than dysphagia. However, odinophagia can ultimately lead into dysphagia. Hence, esophagitis has also has also one of the uh, condition uh, which is causing uh, uh, which is causing dysphagia. Now, coming to dysmotility. Dysmotility is it uh, swallowing involves a peristaltic movement that is it involves movement of food along the esophageal tract along the GI system. So any dysmotility uh, causes such as echelasia. Echelasia is a condition where normally food from esophagus enters into stomach through lower esophageal sphincter. This if the lower esophageal sphincter has to automatically open when the food is going in. If at all this lower esophageal sphincter will not open up when the food has to go inside that condition is called as echelasia where it is a dysmotility. It is a uh, it is one of a condition of dysmotility. And there are certain other non-specific motility disorders uh, which will also lead to dysphagia. 
Now coming to neurologic disorders. Certain neurologic disorders like bulbar palsy, pseudobulbar palsy, myasthenia gravis can also lead to dysphagia. Iron deficiency anemia. This iron deficiency anemia in chronic iron deficiency anemia cases, what happens is there will be something called sidrophenic dysphagia where there will be post-cricoid webs will be seen which will lead to dysphagia. One of the most commonest condition. This is also called as hysterical anemia and it is usually seen in long-standing elderly cases and also in poor uh, esophageal peristaltic activity can be seen in this case in iron deficiency anemia. This also other conditions such as benign esophageal strictures, usually long-standing esophagitis can lead to benign esophageal strictures. Dysphagia due to obstruction of lumen or motility defect and we also can see oral candidiasis or dinophagia, dysphagia and regurgitation. All these three conditions can be seen in case of oral candidiasis. Now coming to mediastinal spread of bronchial carcinoma. As we already spoken, it is an extrinsic compression which will further lead to dysphagia, dysphagia condition. And other causes include corrosives and drugs like NSAIDs and drugs like uh, uh, bisphosphonates, drugs like potassium supplements, radiotherapy, post-radiotherapy cases and also in long-term nasogastric intubation cases also can lead to dysphagia. Now coming to motility disorders, other motility disorders, there will be pharyngeal pouches, achalasia and also diffused esophageal spasm. That is, this will cause transient dysphagia, while well, the above two can cause uh, permanent dysphagia if unrated. Next, nutcracker esophagus is a condition which will actually cause extremely forceful peristaltic activity. So, this will also cause dysphagia. In systemic sclerosis and in case of Crest syndrome, that is calcinosis, cutis, Reynolds phenomena, esophageal dysmotility and we have scleroderma and telangiectasia. This is a syndrome which also has esophageal strictures as one of the component event. And dermatomyositis, myasthenia gravis and rheumatoid arthritis are other autoimmune disorders which may also exhibit dysphagia. And this picture shows a corkscrew appearance of esophagus because of the shape of the esophagus of a corkscrew resembling a corkscrew it is called as corkscrew esophagus uh, and uh, it this also is one of the cause for uh, dysphagia. Now coming to clinical features. Various clinical features that are associated with dysphagia. The prime clinical feature itself is difficulty in swallowing. Since oropharyngeal disorders will make initiation itself uh, difficult for swallowing and these symptoms will include uh, choking, they will have tracheal aspiration and also nasal regurgitation can be seen. Other signs like dysarthria, drooling, hoarseness and other cranial nerve disorders can be seen. Benign esophageal strictures will have will present with dysphagia which is usually worsened with solids than liquids. So patient is uh, can take liquids easily when, com uh, when compared to solids and as this benign esophageal strictures progress uh, in, in severity, even taking liquids sometimes like porridge etc. can also be difficult. And this benign esophageal uh, stricture is an absolute dysphagia can be seen when um, is seen with bolus obstruction followed by meat ingestion. Rings due to submucous fibrosis as we are already talking about. Skatsky rings can be seen. This is nothing but esophago gastric at the esophago gastric junction where there will be fibrous rings can be seen which are called as Skatsky rings. And post cricoid web can be seen in case of plumber Vinson syndrome which we actually saw which is nothing but severe iron deficiency anemia also called as plumber Vinson syndrome or patterson kelly syndrome where we can see post cricoid web and patients usually have difficulty in swallowing that is nothing but dysphagia. Coming to investigations, the most common investigation, the gold standard investigation for dysphagia is nothing but endoscopy. Uh, it can be used <coughs> for biopsy taking or for direct visualization and it also can be used for treatment that is nothing but uh, endoscopic balloon dilatation where dilatation of strictures can be done by, at the time of diagnosis itself. And second diagnostic procedure is nothing but barium swallow with video fluoroscopic swallowing uh, assessment. This will allow us to see wherever the stricture is present or if there is any carcinoma or any malignancy present or any uh, constrictions present within the uh, GI system, within the uh, esophageal system. Then we can see with barium swallow along with video fluoroscopic swallowing. And esophageal manometry is one another test. This esophageal manometry is usually uh, known, uh, will be helpful for uh, assessing the function of motor nervous system of the esophagus. And uh, high resolution manometry will, will, help, will be helpful for accurate classification of these abnormalities. 
and complete blood picture has to be uh, done to rule out anemia especially for plumber vinson syndrome to rule out plumber vinson syndrome complete blood picture also has to be done and clinical examination and pet for metastatic pet is nothing but positron emission tomography for metastatic lesions has to be carried out and here are two pictures which are showing esophageal rings as we are talking there will be multiple rings followed by one after another which are nothing but fibrosed rings can be seen in the esophagus and the barium swell of here is shows a esophageal malignancy usually have a rat tail appearance barium swallow in case of any malignancies of esophageal will show a rat tail appearance now coming to management as we have discussed endoscopy while while doing the diagnosis itself with the help of endoscopy if at all we find strictures then you can do endoscopic balloon dilatation where forcefully pneumatic dilatation will be done with the help of balloon using 30 to 35 mm diameter which is fluoroscopically can also be visualized fluoroscopically positioned balloon will be used in these cases oral candidiasis if, if odynophagia is one of the reason for dysphagia because of oral candidiasis then systemic azole therapy with fluconazole can be given fluconazole 200 milligrams daily for 14 days has to be given and long term therapy with PPS that is uh, proton pump inhibitors can also be given to reduce recurrent esophagitis because of any uh, and stricture formation because of any uh, acid uh, acidic reflex because of any acid reflex which will further lead to esophagitis and non healing this might form stricture formation and PPS will also be helpful long term therapy with PPS will also be helpful in case of dysphagia in rating dysphagia and other endoscopically directed injection of botulinum toxin has also been uh, has also been tried however relapse is seen in these cases patients will again uh, come up with dysphagia in this kind of treatment procedures and surgical myotomy diverticulotomy has diverticulotomy can be done with or without resection of the pharyngeal pouches uh, uh, this also is one of the cause for dysphagia hence removal of this pharyngeal pouch or without removal of pharyngeal pouch associated with surgical myotomy can be uh, useful in case of dysphagia many of us may have experienced burning sensation in the stomach and many of us would have heard people telling about burning sensation discomfort uh, nausea kind of sensation etc so the topic for today is dyspepsia and this is usually characterized by bloating, discomfort, nausea which originates from upper GIT. So let us uh, dig into the causes of this dyspepsia and this dyspepsia is usually uh, out of different reasons and upper gastrointestinal disorders include peptic ulcer disease, esophageal spasm, acute gastritis and conditions like irritable bowel syndrome is one of the common condition associated with gallstones and also gallstones can also lead to uh, upper uh, can lead to dyspepsia a lot of conditions other gastrointestinal disorders include honey hepatic disease which is nothing but hepatitis metastasis and colonic carcinoma is also one of the common causes and then we also have pancreatic disease which is nothing but chronic pancreatitis or cancer so these are other gastrointestinal disorders which are usually associated with dyspepsia there are certain systemic diseases which are nothing but hypercalcemia and renal failure these are also lead, this, these are the conditions which can also lead to dyspepsia and other drugs the most common uh, causative for dyspepsia are drugs and among them the most common is NSAIDs especially uh, NSAIDs like uh, nesiclofenac, aspirin etc can also lead to dyspepsia other conditions include digoxin, corticosteroids, iron and potassium supplements are one of the common causes for dyspepsia. Corticosteroids are usually, uh, uh, are usually the cause for peptic ulcer. Severe usage or abuse usage of either exogenous or endogenous increase in corticosteroids can lead to peptic ulcers which is one of the common cause of dyspepsia again. Coming to the clinical features of this dyspepsia, usually heartburn can be seen and also reflex symptoms are usually associated with dyspepsia. And other alarming symptoms in dyspepsia include anemia, they include weight loss, vomiting, nausea, most commonly seen, heartburn, any hematemesis and melina are conditions that has to be uh, taken care immediately. And if there is any palpable abdominal mass also, now we have to... Uh, uh, we have to be very cautious in it. I mean, these are some of the alarming symptoms of dyspepsia. Now, coming to acute gastritis. Acute gastritis is one of the common cause for dyspepsia. In this, what happens is it is usually characterized by dyspepsia, nausea, vomiting, and hematemesis. It usually results from NSAIDs and usage of aspirin, and it can be diagnosed by endoscopy, and biopsy can exclude any ulcer. 
usually this is an acute condition and uh, you have to take care uh, be cautious to see whether there is an ulcer which is uh, actually the causative uh, reason or which is a causative for this dyspepsia and management usually it, uh, it will uh, regress by using short term therapy of uh, uh, antacids and H2 receptor antagonist and anti emetics such as meclopramide if at all uh, there is a severe nausea and vomiting sensation in these patients. Coming to Helicobacter pylori induced chronic gastritis, this is one of the commonest cause in dyspepsia. This Helicobacter pylori is known to be uh, the causative organism and usually by eradicating this H pylori infection, most of the gastritis patients can be uh, can actually be benefited. This H. pylori induced chronic gastritis, uh, in this case is what lymphocytes and plasma cells are usually seen and most patients usually are asymptomatic but however if they are symptomatic, severe dyspeptic, uh, dyspepsia related symptoms can be seen. Coming to autoimmune chronic gastritis, this is also one of the co uh, common causes which will include body of the stomach which will spare the antrum. The pathognomic feature of autoimmune induced gastritis is it involves stomach body of the stomach sparing the anterum of the stomach. Due to autoimmune activity against the parietal cells, uh, this will lead to uh, dyspepsia and these parietal cells and intrinsic factor antibodies can also be seen. In this case what happens is because intrinsic factor is also being affected, pernicious anemia can be seen associated with this autoimmune chronic gastritis. In severe cases, there will be severe gastric atrophy and as we discussed pernicious anemia too and they have risk of Gastric cancer is very high in case of this autoimmune related chronic gastritis. Now this picture we can see H. pylori is crossing the mucous layer of the stomach. Normally this H. pylori when enters the gastric mucinous gel, it, what it does is it dissolves this mucinous gel and then enter into the epithelial cells. This gel will be degelled or it dissolves it and this H. pylori will thus enter into the epithelial cells thus leading to uh, it damage of the epithelial cells and thus at the end it will lead to dyspepsia. Now coming to peptic ulcer disease. Peptic ulcer disease is one of the common cause for dyspepsia. <clears throat> in this we see either gastric or duodenal ulcers. It is usually refers to any ulcer in the lower esophagus and stomach, duodenum, jejunum or ileum. Ulcer in any of these regions will, is nothing but peptic ulcer disease. It can be either an acute or chronic uh, condition and etiologic factors usually are H. pylori, NSAIDs especially aspirin and hereditary can also be one of the cause smoking and imbalance in acid pepsin and mucosal resistance is one of the commonest cause and it is actually the pathogenesis of this dyspepsia. Now here in this picture when, whenever we can see esophagus, stomach and ulcers, uh, ulcers within the esophagus, stomach, duodenum uh, and also the adjacent muscle. So this is, this is when all these organs are involved especially lower esophagus, stomach, duodenum, jejunum and ileum then it is called as peptic ulcer, acid peptic ulcers. And now coming to the clinical features. The most common clinical features associated is recurrent abdominal pain. Patients complain of recurrent abdominal pain which is localized to epigastrium. And this pointing sign is, is usually seen where patients point with two to three fingers just at the epigastric region. This is a pathognomic feature of acid peptic ulcers uh, related dyspepsia. It is related to food intake. Most people say that uh, we just before taking food or at the time of hunger, this pain is usually exaggerated. Hence, it is also called as hunger pain and it relieves for taking food. And it is episodic in nature. It is not a continuous pain. It is episodic in nature and aggravates when the stomach is empty. Okay. And usually this is seen in case of, uh, in duodenal also what happens is, it is usually seen in night, re night time and night pain is one of the common symptoms in duodenal ulcer region. Pain is relieved on taking, on taking milk, on taking antacids and on belching and vomiting also pain is relieved. You, when, when patient belches, he feels comfortable. So this is one of a, a symptom in case of acid peptic disease. And as we discussed, it is an episodic pain and other symptoms associated are water brush, loss of appetite, anorexia and abrupt hematemesis. In some cases, anemia can also be seen but it, it is undetected usually because of chronic bed loss within the dyspeptic ulcers. Now coming to the investigations, usually a double contrast barium meal examination can be done. Endoscopy is again one of the easiest examination and urea breath test especially for H. pylori uh, and also gastric biopsy in case if malignancy is suspected then gastric biopsy also has to be taken. Coming to management, in case of H. pylori induced dyspepsia then antibiotic treatment is, uh, is essential. 
and avoid smoking and NSAIDs because they are also one of the causative uh, causative factors. Antacids will be helpful in case of long term uh, therapy with PPIs will be helpful in case of uh, dyspepsia and surgical treatment in case of any hemorrhage or perforation is seen because of these ulcers then surgical treatment also will be helpful. Thank you.